Narcissistic Rage and Narcissistic Injury, What You Need to Know. Half of the harm that is done in this world is due to people who want to feel important. They don't mean to do harm, but the harm that they cause does not interest them, or they do not see it, or they justify it because they think they are absorbed in the endless struggle with to think well of themselves. T.S. Eliot. Hello, I'm certified life coach and author Angela Atkinson. I'm a recognized expert on narcissism and narcissistic personality disorder who has studied and written extensively on narcissistic relationships. My mission is to help those who have experienced emotional and mental devastation that comes with narcissistic abuse in these incredibly toxic relationships to rediscover their true selves, stop the gaslighting and manipulation, and move forward with their genuine desires into a life that is exactly what they choose for themselves. In today's video, we will cover the following. We will define narcissistic rage and narcissistic injury. We will discover how to diffuse a raging narcissist, how to understand the narcissist motivations and the primary role of supply. So what is narcissistic rage? If you've ever lived with, loved, or known a narcissist, you have likely been the victim of narcissistic rage, which is a term that was introduced first in the 1972 book entitled The Analysis of the Self. This kind of rage manifests when a narcissist vents his frustration when his ego takes a hit. Since narcissists have an inflated level of self-importance, they often find it difficult to deal with criticism, whether it's real or perceived. Now, if you're in a currently in a toxic relationship involving a narcissist, it's very important that you understand these types of rages and why they happen. So what exactly causes a narcissist to rage? Well, psychologists have identified several typical causes for narcissistic behavior and personalities, including a general obsession with self, which is often gained through um, certain experiences during childhood. They often have an addiction to anger, and as they rage, it's often because of a blow to their inflated sense of self-esteem. They may often make self-depreciating statements, no doubt silently begging you to disagree with them, and tell them how amazing, beautiful, wonderful, and perfect they really are. And when you don't, that rage could begin. A narcissistic rage often begins, if, you, if you're asking yourself, you know, how does a narcissist even get started with the rage? Well, it often begins when um, narcissists become defensive because they think you're insulting them or if you've attempted to communicate a problem or concern about your relationship with a narcissist. Now, they may also be caused by, uh, you know, like when a narcissist finds himself feeling unfulfilled and blames the victim or target for what that feeling is. Now, the narcissist tends to feel powerful when he or she rages, and they aren't likely to stop until the requirements that they feel they deserve are met. So if we're being honest, um, a narcissist needs to feel basically like he thinks, you know, that you think he or she is perfect. So as we've previous, previously discussed, narcissists believe that by appearing perfect, they can get the love, admiration, attention, and or respect that they feel they deserve. But when they think that someone is not, um, when, when they think someone thinks they're not perfect or not good enough, they often find themselves feeling shameful or anxious. And this can often manifest as guilt or anger. In any case, when a narcissist's self-esteem takes a hit, he might react in a number of ways on a broad spectrum. So anywhere from being mildly irritated all the way to having seriously explosive tantrums that can even become violent in some cases. This type of narcissistic injury causes the narcissist to need to destroy the perceived threat to his self-esteem. And by raging against the offender or the victim, the narcissist is able to feel safe and powerful again, you know, like he or she has control of the environment around them. So what are the different types of narcissistic rage that you might experience? Well, there are three primary types, including explosive rage, passive aggressive rage, and rage that causes self-harm. Now, an explosive rage happens when a narcissist has a violent outburst, whether it's physical or verbal, uh, and, and, and ex it's expressed 
Um, a passive aggressive rage is expressed when a narcissist passively punishes the victim. He might do this by giving them the silent treatment, by being blatantly rude, or even by doing nice things for someone else and flaunting those things in the victim's face. Uh, so, for example, um, say that you're at a bar and you're man is the narcissist and your narcissist is angry at you. And so rather than uh, doing nice things for you, maybe he goes and buys a drink for another woman or he asks someone else to dance. He does things with or for other people to bother you. Um, if that makes any sense now, um, it, it's like this. Okay. So in any case, you know, you, you will know that it's happening. Uh, he'll feel perfectly fine telling you that you're crazy and pretending he's not doing anything at all. He just, you know, you're overbearing, you're, you're obsessed, blah, blah, blah. You know how it is. In some cases, he may even be so bold as to inform you of your infraction and require that you submit to the punishment he's willing to shell out uh, voluntarily. It's kind of crazy. Now, when a narcissist manifests his rage through self-harm, you may not understand what's happening. It doesn't seem consistent with his personality, but it does get him plenty of attention. Some narcissists have been known to cut, burn, or even stab themselves, among other extreme self-injuries, during a narcissistic rage. So what about narcissistic injury? Well, narcissistic rage and narcissistic injury do go hand in hand. And while they often claim that their raging behavior is related to stress, the opposite is true. In fact, a narcissistic rage is usually triggered by some perceived insult, criticism, or disagreement that results in narcissistic injury. So why does the narcissist act like you're the one that causes the injury? Well, the average raging narcissist thinks that his or her victim intentionally caused this so-called injury and that she did so with a hostile motive. Now, the reaction to this trigger is often intensely disproportionate to the actual offense committed by the victim, and invariably, the victim in these situations sees the narcissist as unreasonable, out of control, mean, or even just plain old crazy. Now, if you're the narcissist target, if you're a regular target of narcissistic rage, you need to know that it is truly not your fault. Okay? It's not about you. It never was. It's always been about the narcissist. Now, how do you survive narcissistic rage and narcissistic injury? How do you diffuse a raging or injured narcissist? Well, when you find yourself as the victim of this kind of rage, you've got to respond logically, not emotionally. So you want to do that by communicating the emotions um, in a way that is very simple, very uh, specific. Uh, so narcissists... Um, uh, Sam Vaknin, who I really do not like to quote anymore because he's kind of rude, uh, he actually says that uh, to try to communicate emotions with a narcissist is like discussing atheism with a religious fundamentalist. They employ a myriad of defense mechanisms to cope with their repressed emotions, projective identification, splitting, projection, intellectualization, and rationaliza rationalization. Okay, now listen, now when I say to respond logically, I don't mean that you should use logic or reason to help the narcissist calm down because the fact is this almost never works. In fact, during a narcissistic rage, there isn't really room for your opinion or your side of the story at all. In fact, offering it will just pretty much prolong the confrontation altogether. So uh, what you need to do is you've got to stay calm. And if possible, you've got to remove yourself from the situation. Now, if you can't do that, try this. Take a deep breath and be prepared to bite your tongue. I know, it sucks. But the fact is that if you bother to argue or reason with this person, uh, you're going to go crazy. <laughs> so instead, just let him know that you hear his concerns and avoid raising your voice or introducing any emotion into the conversation. Now, we talk about this a lot at Queen Being, the, the gray rock method where you just go flat and, and refuse to respond um, in any emotional way to a narcissist. So remember again, it's never about you. It's always about the narcissist. So try not to take it personally, even though the narcissist will make it personal and will stop at literally nothing to hurt your feelings and cause you to react. So be prepared. It's a tough one. So do you know the patterns of a raging narcissist? 
Well, the first thing you need to understand is that not a single thing you say will change the narcissist's feelings during the rage. So it doesn't matter if he's arguing that the sky should be red instead of blue or if she's right. As far as she's concerned, uh, there's nothing that you or anyone else could say to change her mind. Now, remember that the, it's not about controlling the situation. It, it is. It's about controlling the situation, about being perceived as perfect. Any evidence that the narcissist is losing control or not being perceived as perfect will further incite the rage. So in order to end a rage, a narcissist needs to feel safe and in control of the situation. So if you want to simply end the temporary moment, then you may need to say whatever your narcissist needs to hear in order to feel that way again especially if your safety is, is, is at stake, but even if it's just your emotional well-being that you're trying to protect. So the interesting thing about narcissists, we're going to talk about the narcissist in public very quick. Uh, the interesting thing about most narcissists is that being the charming and outgoing people they are or tend to be, they generally project an image of being fun and laid back. But in private, it's a whole other story. You know, behind closed doors, a narcissist feels quite safe releasing his rage. And since he's so often the life of the party, the nice guy, the charmer that everyone loves to hang out with, in public anyway, uh, many people won't have any idea what kind of person they're dealing with. So unless someone actually witnesses the person rage, they can't understand what life is like for the victim of the or the target of that rage, especially if it's a lover, parent, or family member, someone who lives inside the narcissist's home. It's very easy to hide yourself behind closed doors and your, your behavior. Now, um, when it comes to projection, uh, you know, as a victim of narcissistic rage, you're, you're likely you've already been accused of being selfish or ignoring the narcissist's emotional or physical needs or being dishonest, arrogant, lazy, or any number of other insulting descriptives. Uh, but what's really happening most of the time is projection. So narcissists project their own inadequacies onto their victims. Uh, so as usual, not about the narcissist. Yeah, it is about the narcissist. It's not about you. So let's talk about their selective memories. Uh, they are narcissists. They're infamous for their selective memories. Uh, they may claim that they said something they never really did and then get angry at you for not listening. Or they might deny something that you know they said they did say, but now they regret it, so they're just going to pretend it didn't happen. And of course, they're definitely likely to contradict themselves in the same breath, lashing out at anyone who points it out to them. It's good stuff. In either case, you might feel a little bit like you're going crazy when it happens, and, and it is a sign of gaslighting. Something to consider. All right. Uh, the narcissist and you. So when you love a narcissist, you have to understand your role in her life or his life. A narcissist really does not have any interest in being emotionally or intellectually stimulated by the people uh, in their lives. So in fact, any feedback of any kind can be perceived as a threat, whether it's positive or negative. Uh, people who are in relationships with narcissists do really have very clear roles in their lives. Uh, often they are the primary source of narcissistic supply. That is, they are expected to supply the narcissist with admiration, respect, love, and attention that they believe they deserve, the narcissist believes he deserves. Uh, when the suppliers fail in their mission, in the narcissist's opinion, uh, the rage often turns against them. So um, a, pat a passive witness to the narcissist's uh, past, past accomplishments, a dispenser of accumulated narcissistic supply, um, a punching bag for the rages, codependence, uh, possession, the, they're owned, you know, um, and, and really... You know, being a narcissist's significant other is a full-time, extremely exhausting job. So take it with what, take it for what it is. Um, so if you've ever been the victim of narcissistic rage and narcissistic injury, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and if you have, I, I, I guess I'd like to ask you, um, how did you handle it? Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you'd share your thoughts and your experiences in the comment section below. And this is all I have for today. So um, again, my name is Angela Atkinson. I'm a certified life coach and author. Uh, I write books. You can find them at booksangiewrote.com. Um, more than half of them are related to narcissism and narcissism support recovery. Um, 
You can also get plenty of free resources, tools, and information about narcissistic abuse and recovery at queenbeing.com. Or you can get personalized one-on-one coaching at NarcissismSupportCoach.com. This is Angie Atkinson signing off. Thanks for listening and have a great week.